Hey there Rec Room, Oxy here. In today's tutorial, we're going to be going over a CB2 sword fighting arena inside of Rec Room. This is a very easy but advanced method of CB2. I'm going to be showing you how to build the outside of the arena and I'm going to be showing you how to set up all the swords and everything you'll need. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Before we get started with our arena, what we're going to do is make sure we are in a large enough area to actually build an arena. You don't want to try this in your dorm room. Make sure you have enough space. Let's get into it. All right. Now that you're in a large enough area to build in, let's get our maker pin out. So to get your maker pin out, you can just click use on the maker pin and it'll appear right in front of you. You can pick it up with each of your dominant hands, your left or your right. But to, for easier access, you can just favorite it and pull it out from your back. Now we're just going to look at it really quickly and open palette. Now we're going to select cube and go to the dirt material. I'm going to go to my colors, select a brown. Any of these browns would work. I'm going to select the leather color. So I'm going to go to my settings and make sure these are right. So our main ones are uniform shapes off position snap of 0.5 and that's all we're going to be using you could also keep five degree rotation snap but it doesn't really matter uh you could always turn snapping off for that so we're going to go back off of this make sure we're on grid snapping we're going to now start drawing a large area This is large enough for me, but feel free to be creative with how large yours is. Um, this is just how big mine's going to be for this tutorial. So now I'm going to get started with my frame. I'm going to go to my settings. I'm going to turn my position snap to either 10 or 100 for a straight tube. Um, we're going to turn uniform shapes on. Go to our second page. Turn fixed tube width on with a tube size of eight centimeters. Connect nearby tubes off, smooth tubes off, and two facets of four. Tube height ratio of 100%. And that is all the tube settings we'll be using. So we're just going to head right back over here to our shapes. And then we're going to select tube. We're going to go back over to our materials, go to the second page and select gravel you could also use rock or any other material that you're comfortable with i'm going to select a gray slate or you could use a gray color i'm going to use slate so now i'm going to head over here to my actual cube and then i'm going to go slightly above this and then i'm just going to draw a straight line doesn't matter how if this moves you have uniform shapes on, so it will always be straight. So we're just going to follow along the lines of our area. We're going to bring it back a little bit. And then we're going to come back over here and turn our position snap down so that we can fix this side. We originally set our position snap to 10 so it wouldn't be all over the place. So I'm just going to move it down to 0.5 select my tube and then slightly move it over make sure you keep it as straight as you can i'm going to put mine out a little more so they can go into the other tube that i'm going to lay down um, i'm going to come back over here extend this one a little bit more out make sure that it's straight all right now we have one side of our frame what we're going to do is we're going to invert clone over just to make sure that we catch any angles. We're going to come to this other side, fly down if you're already up, and then we're going to just align this up like so. Um, just for ease of creation, we're just going to clone this, use our rotate tool, rotate this around, move in, We're going to go to the very end of our tube. Make sure it's in the other one. 
and now we're just going to move over to the back make sure it's all lined up we have a little end poking out over here so we're going to manipulate this back in make sure we're trying to keep it straight align it up with the other two this may take a few seconds if you have a uh, non-steady hand then we're going to bring out our clone tool again invert clone back over to this other side and this will be our frame completed we're going to line these up with our previous tubes and boom now we're going to drop our maker pin pull it back out and make sure that it is all merged by using the select tool and looks like mine's all merged so let's get into the circuits here are all of the circuits v2 chips we're going to be using for today's tutorial what these chips will do will allow you to reset the object spawn point when you move out of a certain area so that you can't run away with the swords this is going to help for keeping the battles inside of the arena and just keeping the swords where they're supposed to be so if you want to skip me showing you guys how to find all of these chips go to this timestamp and if you'd like to see where all of the chips are i'm going to show you in the next clip see you there now i'm going to be showing you how to get the chips displayed here so to find these chips we're going to open our palette go to the circuits v2 tab go to page four and then we're going to select the get local player chip I'm going to spawn this right in front of me. Now we're going to get the if chip and then we're going to spawn in two of these. Next, we're going to go to page eight to get the player get equipped objects chip. I want to spawn this one in and then head to page 11. Now we're going to get the rec room object has tab chip and then spawn two of those in. Next, we're going to go right under it and select the reset object chip, and then we're going to spawn in two of these. So we're going to need two more gadgets. Those gadgets are the tag and the circuits V2 trigger volume. You can find those on your palette search tool, which is right here. And then we're going to search up tag. So T A G, and then we're going to spawn in the set tags chip. There's one thing we need to do to this chip for our tutorial to work. So we're just going to click configure and then we're going to type in sword as our tag name. S W O R D. That will have our tag set up so that we can use it for our trigger volumes and our swords so that they will reset once we take it out of the trigger volume. So now I'm going to go back to my search palette and then search up trigger volume V2. But I'm actually just going to type in trig. T-R-I-G-G. -G. You can find the trigger volume V2 right here. And spawn this in. You know you have the right one whenever you have the circuits V2 menu right here. With all of your outputs. Now we're going to go connect all of our chips together. See you in the next clip. So now I've quickly hopped on screen mode to show you guys exactly how to wire all of these chips together and the best methods. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. We're going to bring out our maker pin, bring out our wire tool, wire our player exited chip to our if chip. So if the player exits, then reset the object in their main hand so we're going to move that to the input of the reset object now we have to get our tag for the object of our sword so we're going to wire into our in input on the object has chad tag chip and we're going to configure our tag to sword so we're going to bring out our configure tool right here and then configure this and then we're going to type in sword S W O R D. We're going to now click enter and then X off of this and your tag should update on the object has tag chip. Now we're going to get our local player by uh, wiring our output on the get local player chip to our get player equipped objects. Now we have our local player inside of our trigger volume 
we're going to actually set our offhand objects to the also having the tab. We're going to configure our tag to sword again, just so that we can have the offhand object be reset to. Now we're going to wire our tag to our condition of our if chip, and we're going to wire our else to our if chip. So then it'll reset if we take it out or if we have it on our offhand, it will reset it also. To reset it, we're just going to wire our execute to our reset object. This is going to be the reset for our offhand. So we're going to wire our offhand object to our reset object. This is all of the wiring besides this one right here. So for this final wire, we're going to wire our Boolean to our if chip condition. This is all of the wiring we're going to be using for today's tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to incorporate the swords resetting with our trigger volume in just a second. I'm going to hop back on VR and uh, we're going to continue the tour. So now that we have our chips and our tag set up, we're now going to put it all together and finish with the sword arena. So now we're going to open our palette, go to weapons. We're going to go to the last page and spawn in a sword. We're going to spawn it in, rotate it to where it's facing down. And then we're just going to rotate, make, rotate it again. This way, facing the center. We're going to bring out our move tool, move down, put it into the floor slightly. And then we're going to click configure, make sure it's grabbable. And then we're going to go down to our tags, remove the quest sword tag. And then we're going to type in S W O R D. Now we're going to click add and you should see the ad on the should see the sword on the current tag. So now we're going to go to our respawn settings and turn on respawns for the sword. We're going to put our respawn delay to one second so that whenever it's dropped, it'll respawn as fast as it can. Now we're going to take our clone tool and then clone this exact sword over. We're going to make sure that all of these settings are right. So we're going to go through and you should see the current tag saying sword. Make sure it has a respawn and it would set to respawn here. This one, it may be a little broken, so I'm just going to bring it out of the ground and let it respawn on itself. If yours is bugging out like this, all you need to do is just move this and slightly move it out of the ground more. That's going to reset the spawn point for it. As you can see, it's in the ground now. So now we're going to go over to our trigger volume. We're going to select the move tool, move this over. We're now going to bring out the manipulate tool, manipulate our trigger volume down, and then manipulate it over. Maybe slightly large, but that's what you want. I'm going to manipulate it over long wise. Boom. And then finish off wide wise. So now we have our trigger volume set up. Uh, one last thing we're going to do is make sure that our tag is actually on. So we're going to configure, set our object signal to one, and then we're just going to let go and our tag should be on. Now, when I take the sword out of the ground and I remove it from the area, it will respawn inside at its spawn point. It's bugging out a little but that's going to be the overall end of today's tutorial. I'll see you in the outro. So guys, that's going to be it for today's tutorial. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a subscribe to the channel and like this video. Stay tuned for some more content coming up soon. This has been Oxy with how to make a sword fighting arena inside of Rec Room. Peace.